Hi, Darren Hall here from bet72.com. Okay, just here with a roundup of day three of the Cheltenham Festival, uh, affectionately known as St. Patrick's Thursday. No doubt plenty of pints of Guinness were being supped and celebrated. Another um, fantastic afternoon of action, some uh, really great races, and uh, well, a uh, slightly frustrating day for us actually. I don't really, you know expect to come on here and have to say that after uh, having so much free money being showered upon us but um, I got myself into a position where I decided to really take on the advantage play head on yesterday and uh, unfortunately it backfired a little bit so I just just want to mention that as we just go through a quick recap of uh, the sort of things we got involved with um, a little bit frustrating but as you'll see at the end of the video that the uh, roller coaster seemed to uh, come back round again and uh, as with all these things if you stick with it and stick doing what you want to keep doing then uh, again all good things come to those who wait I suppose a little bit like the Guinness really that was uh, one of their slogans wasn't it back in the day but anyway um, yeah on to the uh, first race the, um, uh, the JLT Novices Chase usual mantra really with that one it was um, pretty much set up um, on the first race refunds, you know, from our point of view, not as many as we can always get involved with. Um, but certainly Paddy Power was okay for us. We can't do the um, um, the Skybet offer that was actually there. Uh, not got an account anymore. Net bet for his second base refund. So again, it was just a case of being all set up, ready for the ready for the first um, ready for the first race. We've been out um, doing a little bit of shopping earlier in the morning. Picked up a couple of Fred price boost as well so that was um uh that was good and it obviously set us set us up to get the day off um to a profitable start um and that was that was all fairly fairly sort of standard no dramas there and um yeah the the, the first race was uh, a reasonably uh, successful one from from the offers point of view um and again it was it was the usual stuff on the on the second race as well We're, our main focus was the um uh, was the Ryanair and the um, stayers hurdle they were sort of the two races we had not necessarily targeted but where the opportunities had presented themselves and, it, and again that's a little bit like what actually happens certainly doing um, the advantage play stuff is, is you're going where the opportunity is it's, it's what we said before about just setting yourself up to be in that sort of position um, uh, yeah we had a refund offer from Paddy Power we did actually hit a second place with Unibet so they've been quite good this week um, and the good thing with them is they refund us cash so we had one from the day before as well and the money just comes straight back in as a bonus you don't see it you don't see it until you click into your bonus area and then you accept it and it just updates your cash balance so there's no actually wagering or free bet to actually cash out it is just literally in there the beauty of that is you can then just use it straight away for the next offer no messing around so it's a good cycle of turnover if indeed you do actually hit any of those um Onto the Ryanair chase, that was one which we'd been really looking forward to. Under so was um, um, our selection, and I don't really like to use that word as such because generally we're talking about um, risk-free and match betting here, the, the actual um, selection or team or object that you're actually um, involved with shouldn't really make any difference because the principles apply across the board, you know, whatever sport it actually is. Um, but unfortunately, we sort of let human um, opinion, I suppose, or it, it, and this shows sort of where a bit of human error comes into it, um, in that we took an opinion on on that horse, slightly buoyed by some of the reviews we've been uh, watching, some of the stuff we've been reading in in the press and talking to other people, um, and I really did fancy Underso to, to 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 go on and do the business. Um, in that race so what we did is we constructed a lot of our bets and our price boosts and everything around that we were in a no lose position but we were in a very big win position if all of those had come in and come off fortunately it just didn't happen um it was beaten by a better horse much better horse on the day you know we can't dispute that um but i suppose with a little bit of sort of hindsight i mean i i sort of had three words to sum up the day it was um sort of frustration a roller coaster and hindsight and and that was a bit of a frustration the roller coaster took a bit of a dip there after a successful first couple of races um and then the hindsight would have been i would have hedged more out obviously but hindsight's a beautiful thing anyway uh, we had some good anti-post positions as well so it was all 
geared up, ready for a, a big um, sort of payout on the, on that particular horse. But it just you know it just didn't happen. Um, and I suppose looking back on it, you can look at it two ways. You know, you can say, well, you could have just hedged everything off equally, but you know it was an opportunity to actually really um, we had some very strong positions. Um, but anyway, we 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 moved on to the for next race and and. Status Hurdle that presented a number of opportunities, and again we had some enhancements, particularly, and we based it all around um, Sam Spinner, um, who was uh, managed to pick up some very good boosts, four to one as well, um, five in decimal, and ended up going off with a lot of the bookmakers at five to two, three point five. It was certainly around about three point seven on the exchanges anyway, um, so that was a massive. Um, a massive movement in um, but again we keyed, we teed ourselves up for that as a big sort of payout um, and it looked quite good at one stage but again it just got swamped in the uh, in the running down the home straight and uh, that was that again so we made a few quid on that race picked up a couple of free bets to move on with but ultimately you know it, it never happened for us again and we, we just turned sort of our advantage play into a fairly average sort of position really. So again, it's a little bit frustrating, still in that roller coaster going down and with hindsight, again, I would have sort of hedged out, but I suppose, you know, it's difficult because uh, you do like to be in these positions where you know, if it, something does come off, it gives yourself a big, a big sort of payout. So again, sort of no harm done. Um, obviously on our bottom line, we could have, come out of the day with more profit um, in that sense particularly for the racing although we'll come to something else in a minute um, but you know it, it just allowed us to participate if you like and, and it would have been a fantastic day I suppose the only other bit I look back with hindsight is could I perhaps hedged a bit more out of these selections in running as well because um, both of them were leading for large parts of their own races the odds were coming down in running um, I decided you know again human judgment I suppose which creates human error um, to actually let those let those run and yeah okay we made a few quid out of each race but it wasn't the big big payout that uh, we, were, we were looking to do but anyway sort of lesson learned on that but to be honest would I do the same again I probably would because they, they were sort of strong fancies there but you know there could equally be a lot to be said for people who just work on purely on the maths, not really caring, you know, if they know one end of the horse from the other um, or how many legs it's got and they just purely, you know, hedge out based on the figures. But again, that's a that's a decision that all you guys have to make when you're actually participating in these offers. But anyway, no harm done, like I say, just a little bit frustrating because uh, we were in some very good positions. Um, so then the rest of the day panned out. Again, we picked up, we picked out about £55 in free bets across uh, the other accounts so we've got those they've, they've all come in now and been credited again you know I'd say bookmakers doing very well with their crediting of the free bets this week with how busy they actually are so obviously the online systems are all functioning very well not had any sort of general support issues or anything so we've got another 55 quid today and I think being the last day of Cheltenham and again you know um, I should learn my lesson from uh, from today but I'm going to actually set up and um, um, set up in positions with some of the free bets again on some of the advice I've been given about some of the selections, but I'm not going down the route of any sort of tipping or uh, mug punting or anything like that. It's just purely an opportunity to try and maximise some of the freebies we've got because they've not really cost us anything, and you know the potential to end the festival on a big high is uh, is quite tempting. So, um, so yeah, but you know the, the offers have been good. I mean, again, Paddy Power has been a good one for us as we've been going on, picking up free bets on that. Um, every day I think we've had very few winners with them actually which will probably please Paddy and, and we're actually picking up the free bets as we go um, free bet in the last as well from Betfred and Betfred have been very good with a boost as well like I say we had the um, uh, we had the 4-1 to one boost um, on uh, Sam Spinner um, in the stayers hurdle which, uh, which, was, which was really good considering how much it actually got hammered in and with hindsight again just to go back, I would. Um, um, I wish I'd uh, ventured around a few more shops in the morning. But anyway, it's, um, um, it's 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 always a juggling act with all of this. And and as I said on a previous video, there's always this fear of missing out combined with 
just sort of get on with it and just you know be grateful that the fact you're being presented with these opportunities so you can't have any sort of regrets in terms of what's actually there but anyway so so it was a frustrating day it was a profitable day not as good as the previous two days i would say um but you know we're, we're well on track to um to exceed the figures of, of last year and as i say if we're set up in a position where we've got a few of these free bets to cash out you know, and, and again, combined with things like best odds guaranteed, they work really well. If you can hit a couple of those with your free bets, then that really does put you in a, in a very strong position. And possibly today, uh, I may look at one or two of these um, fancied horses and perhaps hedge a little bit out in running and combine some of the uh, match betting with the trading. But hopefully more about that in the mop-up video later on on Friday. So, yeah, so sort of with half a mind on that and this is really bad practice if you like because anything that comes and goes you should just put out of your mind and move on i decided the first couple of days pretty knackered after after the events that had gone on but i did just fancy getting involved with a little bit of um of trading so we fired up the in um the in play trading software later on in the evening once we sort of recuperated and fed and watered and everything um, got involved a little bit in the Europa League. That threw up some opportunities, and it did. If you've been on our Twitter feed, you will have seen uh, we got involved with the Arsenal game. That netted us a nice £35 uh, profit there, and also the Leon game as well, which was similar. So, you know, it sort of swings and roundabouts. We keep doing what we're doing. Nothing to do with horse racing, obviously, but um, it just shows there's always other opportunities out there. So that's why you can't dwell on what's gone on before you've just got to move on keep doing what you're doing trusting the strategies trusting what you're actually doing the way you're going about it and the profits will come and right out of the blue again this was in my inbox from um uh from chelt from it was a cheltenham sort of related offer a very thinly veiled cheltenham marketing type offer bgo we'd had some profits from the day before i think we'd have about 30 quid from the previous free spins uh offer Sent another one for 53 spins. This was a qualifying bet we were doing on um, Jungle Giants slot. Again, not going to go into all the slot strategies on here. That's something, again, for bet 72 and, 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 and another day. But we do get involved with a lot of slots offers. But this is one of the best sort of um, times uh, up wins we've had. You can see here it's only a 50, pound, uh, 50 pence stake and we've made £228 there. We were only two symbols off the actual... £50,000 line jackpot. You can see there we're only betting 1p a line and this is based on our minimum stake maximum line strategy that we like to use for qualifying bets. But you can see there straight away from coming in um, on the um, um, on the back of what's gone on before, we just stick to what we're doing, we just carry on again. Nothing to do with horse racing but just wanted to show you the sort of roller coaster of the day went full circle we've been upside down we've been round and around and we ended up actually um with one of our one of one of our best days um of the week so it just shows you just keep plugging away and reinvesting that money and good things will come so i was really buoyed by that and it set us up beautifully now for the fourth day the final day always a little bit of sadness when we get to the last one but yeah we're there it's gold cup day so watch out for the preview video on that uh, plenty going on as you might expect so uh, yeah I hope you guys had a profitable day as well and back soon with the um, preview video for day four of the Cheltenham Festival cheers <laughs>